And now that you know how to parse command line arguments using process.argv and yargs, you've solved the first piece to the puzzle for the notes application. How do we get that unique input from the user? The second piece to the puzzle is how do we store this information? When someone adds a new note, we want to save it somewhere, preferably on the file system. So the next time they try to fetch, remove, or read that note, they actually get the note back. To do this, we're going to need to introduce something called JSON. Now, if you're already familiar with JSON, you probably know it is super popular. It stands for JavaScript Object Notation, and it's a way to represent JavaScript arrays and objects using a string. Now, why would you ever want to do that? Well, you might want to do that because strings are just text, and that's pretty much supported anywhere. I can save JSON to a text file, and then I can read it later, parse it back into a JavaScript array or object, and do something with it. That's exactly what we're going to take a look at in this video. To explore JSON and how it works, let's go ahead and make a new folder inside of our project called Playground. Throughout the course, I'm going to create Playground folders in various projects, which stores simple one-off files that aren't a part of the bigger application. They're just a way to explore a new feature or learn a new concept. In the playground folder, we're going to make a file called json.js. This is where we can explore how JSON works. To get started, let's make a very simple object. We're going to make a variable called obj, setting it equal to an object. And on that object, for the moment, we're just going to define one property. Name, that gets set equal to your first name. I'm going to go ahead and set this one equal to Andrew. And now let's assume we want to take this object and do something with it. We want to do something like send it between servers as a string, save it to a text file, or anything else. To do that, we're going to need to call one JSON method. Let's take a moment to define a variable to store the result, string obj. And we're going to set it equal to, in uppercase, json dot stringify, s-t-r-i-n-g-i-f-y. JSON.stringify takes your object, in this case the obj variable, and returns the JSON stringified version. That means the result stored in string object is actually a string, it's no longer an object. And we can take a look at that using console.log. I'm going to use console.log twice. First up, we're going to use the type of operator to print the type of the string object to make sure it actually is a string. Type of is an operator. It gets typed like this in lowercase. There is no camel casing. Then you pass in the variable whose type you want to check. Next up, we can use console.log to print out the contents of the string itself. Console.log printing out the string obj variable. Perfect. What we've done is we've taken an object, converted it into a JSON string, and we're printing it out to the screen. Over in the terminal, I'm going to navigate into that playground folder. For the moment, it doesn't matter where you run the command, but in the future, it is going to matter that we are in the playground folder. So take a moment to navigate into it. Then we can use node to run our json.js file. When we run the file, we see two things. First, we get our type, which is a string. And this is great because remember, JSON is a string. Next, we get our object. And it looks pretty similar to a JavaScript object, but there are a few differences. First up, your JSON is going to have its attribute names automatically wrapped in double quotes. This is a requirement of the JSON syntax. Next up, you'll notice your strings are also wrapped in double quotes as opposed to single quotes. Now, JSON doesn't just support string values. I could use an array. I could have a Boolean, a number, or anything else. All of those types are perfectly valid inside of your JSON. In this case, we have a very simple example where we have a name property and it's set to Andrew. Now, this is the process of taking an object and converting it into a string. Next up, we're going to define a string and convert that into an object we can actually use in our app. Let's get started by making a variable called person string. And we're going to set it equal to a string using single quotes since JSON uses double quotes inside of itself. Then we're going to define our JSON right here. We're going to start by opening and closing some curly braces. We're going to use double quotes to create our first attribute, which we'll call name. And we're going to set that attribute equal to Andrew. That means after the closing quote, we're going to add the colon. Then we're going to open and close double quotes again and type the value Andrew. 
Next up, we can add another property. After the value, Andrew, I'm gonna create another property after the comma called age. The age property is gonna get set equal to a number. I can use my colon and then define the number without the quotes, in this case, 25. Go ahead and define your JSON to look just like this. You can go ahead and use your name and your age, obviously, but make sure the rest looks identical. Now, let's say we get this JSON from a server or we grab it from a text file. Currently, it's useless. If we wanna get the name value, there is no good way to do that because we're using a string. So person string dot name doesn't exist. What we need to do is take this string and convert it back into an object. To do this, we're gonna use the opposite of json.stringify, which is json.parse. Let's make a variable to store the result. I'm gonna create a person variable, and it's gonna get set equal to json.parse, passing in as the one and only argument, the string you wanna parse. In this case, the person string, which we defined up above. Now what this does is it takes your JSON and it converts it from a string back into its original form, which could be an array or it could be an object. In our case, it converts it back into an object and we have the person object right here. And we can prove it's an object by using the type of operator. I'm gonna use console.log twice, just like we did above. First up, we're gonna print the type of person. Whoops, that's type of, not just type. And second up, we're gonna print the actual person variable, console.log person, perfect. With this in place, we can now rerun the command. I'm actually gonna start node mon, and I'm gonna pass in json.js. And right here you see, we're working with an object, which is great, and we have our regular object below. We know it's an object because it's not wrapped in double quotes. The values don't have any quotes and we use single quotes for Andrew, which is valid in JavaScript, but it's not valid in JSON. And that's the entire process of taking an object, converting it to a string, and then taking the string and converting it back into the object. And this is exactly what we're gonna be doing in the Notes app. The only difference is we're gonna be taking this string and storing it in a file. Then later on, we're gonna be reading that string from the file using json.parse to convert it back to an object. With the basics in place, let's go ahead and take it just one step further. What I'd like to do is actually store this string in a file. Then I wanna read the contents of that file back using the FS module and printing some properties from it. That means we're gonna to need to convert the string which we get back from fs.readfilesync into an object using json.parse. Let's go ahead and comment out all the code we have so far and start with a clean slate. I am gonna leave it up there though, as a reminder of the various methods we've introduced throughout this video. First up, let's go ahead and load in fs. The const fs is gonna get set equal to require, and we're gonna require the fs module, which we've used in the past. The next thing we're gonna do is define that object. This is the one that's gonna be stored inside of our file, and it's the one that's gonna be read back and parsed. This is gonna be a variable called original note. And I'm calling it original note because later on we're gonna load it back in and we'll call that variable note. Now original note is gonna be a regular JavaScript object with two properties. We're gonna have that title property, which will set equal to some title. And we're gonna have that body property, which will set equal to some body. The next step that you are gonna to need to do is take original note and create a variable called original note string and set that variable equal to the JSON value of the object we defined above. That means that you're gonna to need to use one of the two JSON methods we used previously in this video. Now, once you have that original note string variable, we can go ahead and write a file to the file system. And I'll write that line for you. fs.writefilesync. Write file sync, which we used before, takes two arguments. The first one is gonna be the file name. And since we're using JSON, it's important to use the JSON file extension. I'm gonna call this one notes.json, and the text content is gonna be that original note string, which is not yet defined, but will be defined once you fill this line out. And this is the first step to the process. This is how we're gonna write that file into the playground folder. The next step to the process is gonna to be to read out the contents, parse it, using the JSON method above, 
and print one of the properties to the screen to make sure it's an object. In this case, we're going to print the title. The first step is going to be to use a method we haven't used yet. We're going to use the read method available on the file system module to read the contents. Let's make a variable called note string. The note string is going to get set equal to fs.readfilesync. Now, read file sync is similar to write file sync, except it doesn't take the text content since it's getting the text content back for you. In this case, we just specify the first argument, which is the file name notes.json. Now that we have the string, it's going to be your job to take that string, use one of the methods above, and convert it back into an object. You can call that variable note. Next up, down below, the only thing left to do is test that things are working as expected by printing using console.log the type of note. Then below that, we'll use console.log to print the title. Note.title. Your job for this video is going to be to make these two things work by filling out these two lines, both original note string, you have to make that variable, and the note variable, both are going to require a call to a JSON method. Now over in the terminal, you can see I saved the file in a broken state and it crashed. That's expected when you're using node mon. So take a moment, pause the video, knock this out and click play. If you've done things correctly, you should be able to see that the type of is an object and that note title equals some title. You should also see a brand new file in the playground folder. Go ahead and open it up and take a look at what you got. Knock it out, then go ahead and click play. The first thing I'm going to do is fill out this original note string. It's going to be a variable called original note string. And we're going to set it equal to the return value from json.stringify. Now we know json.stringify takes our regular object and it converts it into a string. In this case, we're going to take the original note object and convert that into a string. The next line, which we already have filled out, is going to save that JSON value into the file notes.json. Then we read that value out, and the next step is going to be to create the note variable. Var note will get set equal to json.parse. json.parse takes the string JSON and converts it back into a regular JavaScript object or array, depending on whatever you save. Here, we're going to pass in note string, which we're getting from the file. With this in place, we are now done. When I save the file, node mon is going to automatically restart, and we would expect to not see an error. Instead, we're expecting that we're going to see the object type as well as the note title. And here we go. Right over here inside of the terminal, we have an object and some title printing to the screen. With this in place, we are now done. We've successfully completed the challenge. This is exactly how we are going to save our notes. When someone adds a new note, we're going to use this code to save it. When someone wants to read their note, we're going to use this code to read it. Now, what if someone wants to add a note? That's going to require us to first read all of the notes. Then we're going to modify the notes array. Then we're going to use the code above to save the new array back into the file system. If you open up that notes.json file, you can see right here we have our JSON code inside of the file. And JSON is actually a file format that's supported by most text editors. So I actually already have some nice syntax highlighting built in. Now in the next video, we're going to be filling out the add note function using the exact same logic that we just used inside of this video. So let's take a quick second to recap. First up. JSON is nothing more than a string that kind of looks like a JavaScript object with the notable differences being that it uses double quotes instead of single quotes and all of your property names like a name and age in this case require quotes around them. Now when you want to create some JSON, you can do that using a regular JavaScript object, passing it into the json.stringified method that takes your object and converts it to a JSON string. When you have a JSON string and you want to convert it back into an object, you simply take that string and you pass it into json.parse. This returns an object whose properties you can access. With this in place, we are now ready to move on to the next video and start really filling out the functionality for the Notes app. I am super excited to get started, so stay tuned. I will see you next time.